Hey trainers, Alakaham here with some more Pokemon Video Magic. In today's video, I'm going to be playing in the Master League, and I am showcasing Hydreigon. Hydreigon is a Pokemon that has some renewed utility because of so many uh, of the Necrozma hanging around. So Necrozma typically uses ghost and dark type moves and sometimes some other kinds of moves, but basically the, the bread and butter of this cool new Pokemon that a lot of people are running is going to be totally resisted by Hydreigon. So I wanted to put together a team that showcased that. Um, Hydreigon is weak to fairy types and takes neutral from fighting and of course super effective from other dragons. So I went ahead and put a steel type up front to try and deal with potential fairies and I typically use Hydreigon as the safe swap then as the um, closer here. What did I have as a closer? It's an Annihilate. Okay, so to help out with um, those pesky fighting types to also give some general ghost coverage that uh, hits pretty hard against a lot of different things here. Uh, so Annihilate gives us some general general coverage. And this first video we see a battle that worked out pretty well. Uh, most of this thing's team was going to be weak to our front Pokemon Excadrill, but you saw how the Hydreigon fits in there and was able to um, offer quite a bit of damage in this battle. So there's all of the explanation I was going to give and I'm just going to go ahead and focus in on talking you through the choices that I made during these battles and I hope that you enjoy seeing uh, Hydreigon as a Pokemon that is uh, pretty useful in the current meta, one that might be overlooked right now. Okay, we have a very good lead with Excadrill into Togekiss. Of course, Steel-type is going to resist those hard-hitting, typically hard-hitting charms from Togekiss. And my opponent brings in a Kyogre, that's fine. We have a Dragon-type here, Hydreigon. And I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, Dragon here to try and take out the Kyogre. They decided that they wanted to commit a shield, so I'm going to go ahead and match. We could tank a couple of moves from the Kyogre, but I don't really want to lose this uh, mid-game matchup, so I'm going to be a little more protective here at the end. They shield again and go for the farm down, but we reach a third brutal swing before they are able to totally farm down, and that means we're going to be able to align are Annihilate against their very cool um, Master League Obstagoon. Don't see Obstagoon all that often here. Um, it was sort of popular to power up and run a Master League Obstagoon a couple of seasons ago, and honestly, as a dark type, it again has, has a lot more utility now with all the Necrozma around. Um, but unfortunately, it was not going to beat our Annihilate, so my opponent went ahead and conceded the match. Good game. And in this case, we have what looks like a decent lead up against a Solgaleo, because we are a ground type. But the problem here is that their fast move, uh, Fire Spin, is doing super effective damage. So I'm going to get a shield, and then I'm going to go ahead and swap over to my Annihilate. What I probably should have done was gone ahead and switched into my dark type, High Dragon, because then I wouldn't have had to shield. I was really afraid of getting hit with the Psychic Fangs there. My opponent brings in a Lugia, and this is another really tough uh, matchup for my team. Lugia can do super effective damage with its fast move to my high dragon and then uh, it can do super effective damage with its charge moves to my safe swap here with uh, annihilate so that's not great they did decide to just totally burn a bunch of energy there with um with an arrow blast but they upped their attack strength and that's going to serve them really well here because unfortunately 
I'm not going to be able to reach another charge move with my Excadrill. So that super effective damage only went so far because Lugia is so bulky. I'm going to try and farm up to another move there, but right as soon as I get to as soon as I get to the brutal swing, the Lugia is going to go ahead and take out my Hydreigon. So Lugia is actually pretty difficult. I needed my Excadrill to deal with the Lugia, but I let it get too weakened at the beginning. So we're up against another Solgaleo here, and I'm going to play it differently this time. Um, I build up some energy, I throw this first move, and I'm not worried about building up extra energy right now because I don't want to uh, tank a big health loss on my Excadrill. Instead, I'm going to immediately bring in the Hydreigon, and they threw an Iron Head, which did neutral damage. Um, that's fine. Hydreigon can tank a hit there, and everything that we are going to throw in terms of charge moves with the Brutal Swing is going to be super effective. Um, they decided to go ahead and double shield this Solgaleo, and frankly, I'm <laughs> a little bit nervous about that. I'm unsure why they want to do that. So I used both of my shields as well, and they bring in a Zarud. So I'm going to go for a bigger move that does neutral damage here. I'm going to throw the Flash Cannon. And we almost take out the Zarud, but it does have loaded energy. We are out of shields, and... I decided I was just going to bring in my uh, Annihilate because I knew that we would still have some health left over after being hit with the uh, Power Whip, which was going to be the neutral move that they needed to go for. And my opponent brings in a Necrozma. The Necrozma did not want to see a Shadow Ball from my Annihilate, and then they bring back in the Solgaleo and... Fortunately, we have saved health on the Excadrill. So Excadrill is able to close the match out. And then uh, I missed one of the videos from the set that I was playing there. So I added in this sort of bonus video where I was first testing out the team. And I thought it was sort of fun because we also see a shiny Rayquaza, which is really cool. Um, so I have a pretty good lead with Excadrill up against the Rayquaza. And my opponent brings in a Melmetal. Melmetal really does not want to see Excadrill either, so I went ahead and used the energy that I had built up, and then I brought in the Annihilate. Annihilate caught the superpower for resisted damage, and then we're able to farm down the Melmetal, and to me this worked out really well because I have Ice Punch equipped on my Annihilate, and that means I'm going to be able to do super effective damage to the Rayquaza with my Annihilate as well. So everything that I have on the team actually has play against Rayquaza, but it does look super cool. Um, I went ahead and let the Breaking Swipe through. I know that I can beat the Rayquaza with other Pokemon, so I wanted to save a shield there so that I would have offense or, or defense against whatever was in the back. Turns out I have offense too because Hydreigon is going to resist everything on the standard moveset of a Mewtwo. Now I did go ahead and shield that move because in an earlier game a Mewtwo straight ice beamed me and uh, just slew the dragon there as it stood. Loss of the shield is fine. Uh, my opponent is going to be able to take out the uh, Hydreigon, at least I think. This Brutal Swing shouldn't take it out just yet. Um, but my other Pokemon all have play, so we're going to go ahead and bring in the Excadrill, we're going to throw the Rock Slide, and that is going to knock this Flying type out of the sky and wrap up that game for us. So Hydreigon, very cool pick. Uh, I have 100% IV, which is really nice, I just haven't powered it up all the way yet, but it is one worth investing in right now, specifically because Mewtwo and Necrozma are everywhere, ghost types abound, psychic types are more and more common, uh, so it's a cool pick to have right now. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing these games. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you would like to see more, like the video if you enjoyed this content, and uh, I enjoyed playing for you here. Hope to have more videos ready for you soon. Until next time, trainers.